so I had a short list of 12 films that I'm looking forward to in 2024. There are more films that I'm going to see, but these are the ones I'm actually looking forward to seeing. Uh, and I was glad to see that Bill and I had some similarities in our lists. Uh, mm -hmm. Top of the list, Deadpool 3. I, I am... Uh, a Deadpool fan. I'm a Ryan Reynolds as Deadpool fan. I like what he's doing with, with the character and with the world building. And now that it's actually part of the MCU, I'm really interested to see what they're going to do, how they're going to hopefully revitalize that, that stalling series, as we well know. So I'm very much looking forward to that. Uh, right after the turn of the new year, I think in February, we have Matthew Vaughn's Argyle. Uh, I got to see a full scene of the film when I was at Comic Con earlier this year, uh, and it's bonkers fun. And if you you're familiar with Matthew Bond's work, the Kick Ass series, the Kingsman series, you know this is going to have great action, great comedy, great set pieces. It's going to be a lot of fun. So I'm really looking forward to that one. Uh, Mickey Seventeen is the new uh, Bong Joon Ho, who you know multiple Academy Award winner. He does amazing work. Um, and it looks like this is another international production with a largely American cast. So I'm really interested to see that. Uh, the Fall Guy movie with Ryan Gosling. I was a huge fan of the Lee Majors series growing up. Uh, so when I saw that and and, and th that Gosling was the titular Fall Guy, I was on all for that. So I will be at the theaters for that one. Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. Next year is the 40th anniversary of the original I enjoy the Afterlife reboot, so I'm looking forward to where these characters go from there. It looks like there's going to be some exciting new villains. It looks like it's going to go back to that actual, like, genuinely scary slash comedic sci-fi thing. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, the Community movie is next on the list. I'm a big fan of the TV show. Uh, the way that Dan Harmon handles the metaphysical aspects of, of nerd culture and in the educational system and all the opportunities that arise when you're learning something and you're sharing that learning with other people, it enables great discussions and those great discussions turn into great scenarios. And that's what I think the film is going to be able to do. So I'm very excited for that. Um, the next one is Guy Ritchie's The Ministry of Ungentlemanly World Warfare. Great cast. Looks like it's going to be a, um, kind of a mix between his early like British gangster stuff and some of the more fantastical elements of Sherlock Holmes and the man from uncle. So I think it's going to be a good mixture of the two huge stages of his career. So it'll be a little bit of a step back or a little bit of a, a, a reflection uh, while still moving forward in his way. And then finally, Robert Eggers, uh, Nosferatu. I'm a fan of the original. Um, I love vampire lore and the way Nosferatu has is so intrinsically linked with the evolution of cinema to see Robert Eggers' take. I'm very excited. Bill, we got about five minutes. Uh, let's hear your list. All right. Let's marathon it as quickly as we can here. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm apprehensive about The Fall Guy, mostly because I saw the trailer and it's like, it's a movie about a stuntman and all the stunts are CGI. <laughs> but uh, but uh, for my list, we do have some commonality with Eric here. Uh in March, Dune Part 2 got delayed because of the strikes this year. I love what Denis Villeneuve did the, the first time around. And with the delay, it makes this year's visual effects Oscar an open contest. So like, I, I'm very anxious to see how he wraps this up. Uh, also in March, Mickey 17, yeah. Bong Joon-ho, his follow-up from Parasite. And his first purely American film, for lack of a better term, like... like and you have a cast of like Robert Pattinson, Stephen Yoon, and Mark Ruffalo and Tony Collette. Like that is a really strong grouping, no matter what they're doing. Come April, Challengers with Zendaya and Mike Face. That was also supposed to come out this in 2023. It was supposed to lead off the Venice Film Festival, but the strikes got it pulled. In June, uh, not technically on my list because I've already seen it, but the Bike Riders got pulled uh, after I saw it at AFI Fest. It's coming out in June. I think audiences will love that. But for my personal, The Watchers, don't know much about this movie. It's got Dakota Fanning in it, uh, and it's going to be a kind of a supernatural horror movie. But the big thing is, this is the directorial debut for M. Night Shyamalan's daughter, Ishana. She She's written and directed on Servant as well, uh, her, her father's project. But this is her first 
feature. So I'm very curious to see how far the apple falls from the tree, uh, whether for for both good and slapstick funny. I I'm I'm on board. It is, it's like curiosity will kill this cat. Uh, further in in June, Inside Out two we mentioned. I love Inside Out. It's not only one of my favorite Pixar movies, it was my favorite movie for the entire decade of the 2010. Like, it just spoke to me in a way that f- few films ever have. So I'm very curious to see how it lives up to the impossible bar it set for itself, especially with Bill Hader and Mindy Kaling leaving the cast and being replaced, and uh, a new emotion in the form of anxiety coming in, which wasn't seen in the adult characters last time, so I'm going to wonder how they reconcile that. In July, we have Deadpool 3, the last Marvel film that anybody is going to care about, uh, especially because just for S's and G's, we're bringing back Hugh Jackman one last time. Uh, Ryan Reynolds can do no wrong with this series. I, I'm very excited for this. Uh, and then late next year, uh, in December, as Eric mentioned, Robert Eggers doing his own version of Nosferatu. I'm normally against remakes in general, unless you give me a good reason. Robert Eggers is a damn good reason. And coming off of his really good performance in the It movies as just being the creepy as hell Pennywise, Bill Skarsgård is going to play Count Orlock. That gets my butt in the seat. I can't wait to see what he does with this. Plus, the movie's over 100 years old. I think a remake is allowable after the century mark. <laughs> And then finally, this film doesn't even have a title yet. It's it's slated to come out Christmas week next year, but it's the fourth film from Jordan Peele. The man's three for three so far. He has been perfect. He's batting a thousand. So he's earned himself a mulligan. This could be the worst movie of the year. I don't care. I'm going to watch it. The man has more than proven himself. See, that that I listen to you guys, and it gives me some hope, you know, one film that is a sequel that I want to see coming up, uh, along with Dune Part 2, is Furiosa. It's called Furiosa, a Mad Max saga. I mentioned it on the show last week. I love Fury Road. It's one of my favorite movies. I think it's a masterpiece. I really like Spotlight, too, and I, but it's sad. I wish Mad Max would have won the Oscar that year. That and, and Dune, really. I, I think those two, those two are definitely at the top of my list. It's going to be interesting, and, and of course... You know, uh, dates and everything are subject to change. Hopefully there won't be another industry strike that delays things even further. Hopefully there won't be any more plagues that hit America that will delay things further. But, uh, it's you know, I'm looking forward to it. And I'm looking forward to reviewing more with you guys. And we got a lot more great content coming for you this year. 